you're crazy, something's wrong with you, if I would get upset. It's the thoughts, the stories, how we experience ourselves, whether we feel stressed, whether we understand our needs. It's this, these, this internal world that actually drives everything. Where did this all come from? Like where did the idea <laughs> the million dollar like, question where did the idea that sadness or anger or anything other than happiness become wrong because i know for i watched i watched my parents you know sweep things under the carpet sweep it under the carpet sweep like that's the schooling that i got i also remember there was a boyfriend that i had in my 20s and I remember him saying to me, you're crazy, something's wrong with you. If I would get upset or if I felt emotional, he was like, you're, you know, it, just about, you know, even if I was on that time of the month or something like that, he would. It was like the worst thing. Exactly, you could say, you know, it's exactly. Like, but he yeah. would make me feel broken if I had any other emotion other than happiness and gratitude. And this really did eat away at me. It planted some seeds within me that I was broken and something was wrong with me. And then I realized that, you know, there are a full spectrum of emotions and we're allowed to feel them all. And it's all part of being human in this earth suit. And we're not here to suppress them. But where did this, all, where did this idea come from? So, okay, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into this, but um, definitely there are some schools of thought that, that, that really posit this idea that, uh, you know, if you think about what are the skills that feel most learnable and tractable and that can be written into a book, that often those skills were the math, the science, uh, you know, the stuff that feels more tangible. And if you look historically at who got what education, we know that women were encouraged to sit home and sew and knit, and men were encouraged to engage in learning. And the kind of learning that was affirmed were these practical school book type uh, pursuits. And so what you have very early on, even in the way that our educational system is structured, is this narrative that somehow um, women are more emotional and men are less emotional. And that, by the way, is actually, you know, not true. Men feel the full range of emotional experience, as do women. Um, but there was definitely a gender bias that you start seeing very early on in education. We've also found in studies that when people talk to their girl children, that they tend to be much more focused on how did you feel today? You know, how did you feel? How did you feel when that person did that? What's going on with your feelings? There's much more of this focus on emotionality and feelings. We tend to talk to our boy children with more of a focus on task. What is it that you did today? You know, what did you achieve? And so we in our society and the way we converse with our children perpetuate some of these narratives. But then there's also, and I know this is going like way more into depth than probably you, you wanted, but there's also this really interesting thing that happens in psychology. In psychology, if you think about Freud, Freud is psychoanalysis. It's the stuff that's, you know, can't be measured. And there's a backlash then that happens against all these things that can't be me measured. So in psychology, you start seeing this trend that happens in, you know, depending on country in the 60s and the early 70s of behaviorism. And behaviorism is basically, if you can measure it, it exists. What can you measure? You can measure how many times a dog barks in response to being fed a particular treat. You can measure output, things like 
goals and performance um, and checklists. Emotions? Emotions fall into that category of it's more difficult to measure them, therefore they don't exist. They're unimportant. And so even in psychology, I did my PhD in Australia and I found that it was really difficult to find a supervisor who was willing to supervise me in the study of emotions because it was seen as being warm and fluffy and irrelevant. And yet we know that it doesn't matter what goal you've got, whether that goal is a health goal or another goal in your business or in your work life, we can set whatever goal we want. It's the emotions, it's the thoughts, the stories, how we experience ourselves whether we feel stressed, whether we understand our needs, it's this, these, this internal world that actually drives everything. And that really, when I think about emotions, when I think about emotional agility, that is my life's work. It's about how our thoughts, our emotions, and our stories actually underpin all of us, how we come to our careers, our relationships, how we love, how we live how we parent and how we lead.